I want to ask you about your Asian expansion. Right. The Asian part of your business seems to have done well for you recently. How sustainable is that? What visibility do you have? You're right, we had very good growth in Asia in 2016, good volume growth in, in many important industries, in particular the automotive industry, and in particular in China, d double digit. Um, we have to be a little bit more careful for 2016 because there were some incentive programs, so the automotive industry in China, they continue into 2017. That probably means that growth rates will come down a little bit, but more importantly in our case, we have invested a lot over the last couple of years in Asia, uh, to grow our business and I'm quite confident that we will continue to see good growth going into 2017. So growth in Asia is part of the story at BASF. Cost cutting has also been part of the story, uh, Kurt, for your business. Looks as if you've achieved the targets that you set yourself for this past year. How have you gone about doing that? How have you delivered greater cost cuts than anticipated? We were very disciplined starting uh, early in 2016 with regard to expenditures and any type of cost. This has really helped us a lot. Uh, most importantly, our earnings in chemicals grew very nicely. We knew that oil and gas would be more difficult, but even in oil and gas, where the oil price was again much lower than in 2015, we managed to have a positive free cash flow, meaning our oil and gas business could pay for all of its investments from its own. Uh, cash flow and I think this is a very strong sign for that particular business. So how sustainable is this approach to cost cutting, Kurt? I ask this because some analysts have suggested that your approach, rather than the, the big flashy M&A we see elsewhere in the chemicals and agri-chemicals sector, your approach is very much more around cost cutting. So how much can you continue to deliver on costs from here? Uh, we get the same question internally all the time, you know, how far can we go? This never stops. It's a little bit of a grind, we all know this, uh, but taking out cost is an, an underlying necessity for our businesses and it has proven to be very, very successful over the last couple of years. This continues going into 2017. More importantly, however, surely is to grow the business and we are quite confident we had good momentum in Q4 that continues into Q1, so I'm quite optimistic about the first quarter. And that should really fuel our earnings growth in 2017. In the agrochemicals business, you're going to face a very changed competitive environment, a host of deals being put together looking for regulatory approval. Do you think they will all go through and how will BASF respond? First of all, the egg market in 2017 2016 was quite difficult, no real growth, and we see the same pattern for 2017. So the environment is not really a very benign one. However, our business did quite well. We have a good, very innovative business. Would we like to make it bigger? Sure, we can do it organically. If there's an opportunity to acquire a certain business, we would look at it. But we feel very comfortable with what we have today. Can you see yourself buying assets that might be spun off to meet uh, competition regulations uh, as dictated by various competition authorities as these deals get put together? That might be an opportunity we will take, a, certainly we will take a look at those assets if they come to them or when they come to the market, but this is all in a very, very early stage. Okay, let's just talk about your oil and gas business then. Um, the uh, profits falling 62% last year on lower oil prices. You're still happy to have that part of the story in your portfolio at BASF? I think 2016.